What up, people? Frank Bob D, writer, photographer, all that fly shit people adore, editor here at The Rap Scene, mixing it up with the interview series, y'all, and this time we're talking to an amazingly talented artist. He's he's a producer, an MC, and he's doing things that not many of your household names of the culture can really attempt to pull off or execute. He brings an aesthetic to hip-hop that feels like a breath of fresh air, as well as a vivid memory of better days at the same time. People, I'm really proud to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, Mike the Martyr. What up, Mr. Mike? Yo, what's going on, Frank? How you doing? Um, I'm I'm trying to see them better days, man. I'm I'm trying to relive them, you know, and and it's just straight up, like right off the bat, your music takes me there. And again, while feeling like very new, I hope it's not too late to say Happy New Year, dude. No, definitely. Of I usually you. say I usually say Happy New Year, you know, up until February, mid February. You and me both. Why do people think it's so weird? It's just another sun cycle. Uh, straight up and down. Um, thank you again for, for taking the time to talk to us. Please tell us in your own words a little bit about who you are and what you do. I'm Mike the Martyr. Um, you know, I'm a hip hop kid from Minneapolis. Uh, I was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, though, but uh, Minneapolis like took me in as an orphan type shit. Um, I'm a rapper, producer, DJ. I DJ a lot up here. Um, now I'm, I'm kind of older, so that's what um, I kind of did music my whole life, and uh, that's what I am. I'm a music guy from Minneapolis, named Mike the Martyr. Straight up and down. Um, again, I amongst know. other amongst other things, I'm a father. I do graffiti, shit like that. We love it. We we definitely love it. Um, yeah, well, let, let's get into that a little bit a little bit later. Um, people don't know that like Minneapolis. Well, people always know that pe Minneapolis has you know that huge musical lineage in it, but people don't really talk about it when it comes to the hip hop scene, you know. And and it's definitely one of those places that we should be paying more attention to. Tell me more about your equally, if not more important, efforts to bring hip hop to Minnesota, you know, as opposed to you know, making people realize what Minnesota's doing, you know, in other markets. Yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, here's a good way to look at it, I guess. Like, Minneapolis, one of the dopest cities in the Midwest, other than Chicago. I mean, Chicago's a big city, one of the biggest cities in America. I think Minneapolis is the second closest biggest city in the Midwest, other than Chicago. So a lot of people from Chicago come up here, whatever. It's in the middle. Um, being in the middle, we got, we got influenced by the South, East, and uh, West Coast hip hop. And with its own little shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of an East Coast dude because I'm from Virginia, but, and what it is here, it's originally like a battle rap freestyle um, community with idea and rhyme sayers and shit like that. Slug, at one point in time, rhyme sayers was the biggest hip hop record company and in, uh, independent hip hop record company in America. I think, and then Tech Nine had strange music when that came out, I think he became the number one record company, but it started out here freestyling and battling, doing graffiti. Um, south side and north side Minneapolis. And, and then there's also a city right next to us called St. Paul. So Minneapolis and St. Paul kids would go back and forth trying to battle each other back in the day. So, and I think that um, now a lot, of, a lot of artists have come out of here, but they don't always like necessarily, like Lizzo, Lizzo came up here and um, like my friend Alan Kingdom, he's got songs to Kanye and shit, but it's not, once they get on, it's not about being from Minneapolis as much as uh it was for them ha coming up here and what gave them their foundation and shit like that but Minneapolis is a real special place it's like that's why my mom brought me here because she knew it's like it was an artsy place for me to fit in like find something to do she, she knew i wasn't going to be a rocket scientist so um like minneapolis is such a cool ass place for sure as uh, but it's like a breeding ground and then you kind of can take things to other places or you can come back here and it's a safe haven but um there's a lot of new kids and i'm, I'm excited to see what the new generation is going to do from out of here and i'm trying to help new kids as much as i can because it's a lot easier i was like a i was right at the end of the generation where cds came out and shit like that so i was still selling cds and putting up posters and yeah. flyers and shit now kids don't got to do any anything like that and they they have connections to la and new york and shit like that through the internet that we it took us years to build and try to really have to meet people back in the day so whatever we did helped out and like my man bobby raps who's like a grammy grammy award winner we came up in basements here um so it's like we did a lot of foundational work in minneapolis that i'm proud of you know congratulations yeah and thank you and um if it wasn't for those meddling kids no nah, i'm joking <laughs> um, 
you know, and then, and I mean, and we us coming up, we would hear stories about Prince and then we were from the same neighborhoods and shit. So they'd be like, yo, Prince used to be in the same studio. We'd be in the same studios. They'd be like, uh, at this one time I was in the studio and they said that um, Michael Jackson sang Scream with uh, his sister at the studio there, Flight Time Studios and shit. So there's a deep um, history within music here. And, and it was just up to us to use hip hop to pick up a, they were waiting from some to tell the stories about Prince and shit, but it took for us to want to want to do do something, you know what I'm saying, and carry the legacy, carry the legacy of Minneapolis. It's important, and, and we love it, man. And thank you. I it, it it's crazy to to really think about like that that lineage, like that that amazing pedigree of musical inspiration and talent that comes from one small region that doesn't even really get talked about. You know, that's really. Uh, you just mentioned the guy, the man, the myth, the legend, um, Prince. You know, that's yeah. pretty much all anybody really thinks about. But I'm really. Yeah, we're, we're, we're super lucky to have Prince. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm really getting in tune with, you know, some of these um, some of these up and comers, as you should say. I, I actually have a, um, I'm supposed to talk to Louis Blaze. So, you familiar with Louis yeah. Blaze? Yeah, for sure. He dissed the whole city except me. I appreciate that. Good looking out for not dissing me, Cuddy. What should I ask him? Should I ask him why he didn't diss you? No, nah, just to shit, tell him I showed him love. I, I ain't trying to get dissed. Don't keep me out of it. I'm, I'm out the way. But I, I do really appreciate how, you know, it, it didn't feel like a, um, you know, a real type of run to the street beef. You know? It no, was, yeah, definitely. It's like you're staying on and that's some more of what we need in this culture that we love and this thing that we do. Um, exactly. For sure. Where does your style and influence come from? Being that you're from Virginia Beach, and then you know you 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 speak about Harlem, where your parents, I'm sure, and and, and we can hear that the the East Coast and New York influence in your music, but also mm -hmm. what you're doing and and what you have done, and and how you know where you're at has influenced you. Where does your influence come from? That's a great question, but and so like me, my age, I was. In the year 1993, when Wu-Tang first came out, I had that CD, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I said. I went from uh, Criss Cross to Wu-Tang CD real fast. It's a big jump. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like a Wu-Tang baby for sure. And I grew up on Wu-Tang and Nas and Biggie and Tupac's first two albums before. So it's like um, I was so blessed to come up in hip hop. I'd be a child uh, soaking in all the hip hop at a time when it was so potent. You know what I'm saying? The, the the like subject matter i didn't have a dad also so hip-hop was teaching me fathership shit like uh how to be a man when i went outside in the neighborhood and shit so my my style uh and like my influence and style comes from the struggle you know what i'm saying i kind of had a hard childhood and shit and hip-hop always gave me a way to like be happy about life and shit <laughs> so my style comes from the struggle and the streets and shit that's what's up and that's dope it's really heard in in at least from me in your music i can hear how fun you make it you know and and how yeah. like it's you know definitely not you know the negativity what you know what's going on it's rampant and but beyond just not being negative like we could we could point at a, a j cole to say you know he's not being really negative at all in his music so much but it's not as fun you know, as, right. as you know, I know real hip hop to be and what it can be. So, um, shout out to you and thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I struggle with uh, negativity in my hip hop sometimes, just because because I had it real hard. I wouldn't. I'm not not to compare uh, people's lives and shit, but I would say I probably had it a lot harder than J Cole. So, like his his music, I'm not even sure if he could hit the negative plateaus that I try to not hit sometimes, or I try to keep violence and shit out of my music as much as I can sometimes, because it's easy for it to creep in and shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, but also, I tell people, for all the, I, as hard as I had it as a kid, hip-hop gave me equally funner, or way funner times, so just, I'm glad I stuck with it and shit like that. Thank you, hip-hop, and happy late yeah. 50s. Um, my yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, you as well. Um, Thank you. Speaking into that, um, on on Southside Rock, from your latest project, they're gonna remember Titans, which is excellent. Which is Chef's Kiss. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, yeah, th thank you. No, I, I turned it on like a, 
I, I, it, I put it as soon as I saw it. I put it, you know, on the list. I'd be having a whole lot of stuff to listen to. And and something made me skip a whole lot of things to turn it on because I knew I should have been listening to it. So, But I turned it on like a week after you dropped it. I've literally played it every day since. Oh. Literally. Um, but you released it. You marketed it as a... Um, as a as an album, you know, but it, it sounds like more of a mixtape than anything I've heard in a long time. Like, what's with that? How how'd you how'd you design it? Well, yeah, so it's kind of like a compilation. Um, that like this microphone behind me, I record everything at the crib and shit. And uh, over the last few years, I've been at different houses. One of them was like a big trap house where I just had all the homies from Minneapolis out a lot. So with this album, I just kind of I had I like. Um, when Nardwa shouted me out last year, I put half of this album together and I was going to drop it just to like uh, build off of the buzz of Nardwa shouting me out or whatever. But instead, I dropped a mixtape and I held on to the album cuts. So I waited a couple months or whatever and dropped it for the New Year's. But um, I also grabbed like eight old songs. So it's kind of like a compilation. It is like a mixtape because of it all wasn't recorded at one time. Some of them songs are like, there's a song or two on there that's like two or three years old. You know, and, and they're all from different time periods over the last two or three years. But like, except I saw and like um, the untitled one, um, there's like two or three new songs that are brand new. And then the rest are over the last year or two that no one heard of, you know what I'm saying? Just out of my out of my vault. But all my other albums, like most of my projects I would record in one day, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll do the 10 songs or 15 songs in one day. Like I did Draw the Mazes and some of my older albums in one day, Hidden Corner Store and shit. So, um, or like one day or like two or three days, I would stay up for two or three days and just make the album. So this one is just a compilation of songs from the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I need to round back on that too. Um, well, I, I was trying to get to like how, how fun you make it and, and but where it actually came from. On Southside Rock from the project, you said you wrote your first raps in Juvenile Hall. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, can you talk yeah, about the time in your life and like why you decided to pick up the pen at that time? Yeah, for sure. So when I first came up here, so coming up to Minneapolis from Richmond, it was kind of weird because uh, I had never been outside of Richmond before and uh, Minneapolis was a new place. So I just connected with like the more harder kids that were here. I was getting into a lot of fights. I was skipping school. I got 14 truancies right away, which okay. was like... Um, you know, truancy, you skip school, just I was a bad kid. So I got sent to group homes and shit like that. But I was downtown, the um, juvenile center, it overlooks the Metrodome right where the Vikings play. So every time you got to move around and you just stand at the Vikings shit. And I never had seen a real um, football game in my life either because I just moved up here. So motherfucking, yeah. I, and so I, I, I don't know like why I started writing around that time, but that was just an old, so that, uh, around that time is when I'm starting to freestyle at house parties and shit. I'm already selling drugs and like girls are telling me I'm good at rapping. So at, that's probably when I was in juvenile hall, I had a pen and a paper. I started writing some raps. But I don't make uh, you I, rap, you know, once they start. Yeah, <laughs> instead of spitting other people's raps, cause I was good as shit at spitting Nas raps and stuff like that. <laughs> that's dope, you know, that, and that's funny. I can kind of relate to that. You know, everybody like in high school, they just knew I could rap. All they heard was me rapping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. I had that shit going on for sure. That's what um, made me start thinking after a while. Nobody else ever said I was good at anything else. So after a while, I was like, maybe I am good at rapping shit. Just give it a shot. You know, I mean, on the same, a little bit different. I, I have a little bit of past of making music, but it was only just because I just wanted to listen to some dope shit that, you know. Yeah. I, you know, so I didn't really, you know, pursue rapping as much as just making some music. But um, shout out to you for for making that leap because you've done some things with it that uh, I, a lot of people really want. But okay, so you wrote your first rhymes in juvenile hall, but look in the Metrodome. When did you make your first beat? I didn't make beats till way later, it's like man, until I was like 25, 20, so now nah, twenty three maybe something like that. I was already rapping. So, so I, I was rapping. I put out my first CD when I was like, uh, I don't know, 18 or something like that. And I didn't start making beats till I was like 24, 25. I learned from some local producers around here, like my man Maestro, who used to make beats for me and I used to watch him and I just took all his tricks, you know what I'm saying? And um, 
a couple other guys like a dude named Nicodemus taught me how to make beats here. A couple people, whoever really uh, was making beats, they were real helpful because they, they knew that if I got the tricks and shit that I would be dope at it. So I appreciate the Minneapolis dudes that helped me. My man Big Wiz here, one of my best friends, he uh he like would bring dudes around with beat machines and tell them to help me learn it and shit like that. So I had I had some support from the community in making beats, which was dope. And then uh, also I just wanted to make sample beats because that's like the kind of beats I love. And uh, so I just still just make sample. I always make sample beats because that's what I love a lot. And um I love sampling. I love old music. I love so, it too. And uh, um well right hold up let me let me just. What's different about your approach to producing as opposed to your approach to rhyming? Um, you- uh, that's a good question, I guess. Like, well, so with with producing, I'm just like really trying to find a good sample and the butter spot and loop it up. You know what I'm saying? Not do too much. Just just put some put a little chill in your spine just off the sample. With the hip hop, it's a lot of coded words and um like game that I put in there and secrets of life and shit like that. So I think of rapping a lot more as wizardry that I got to pull a lot more out of my soul to 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 uh, to make lyrics. But um, with with beats, it's just like putting it, hooking it up, putting it together. That's okay. And that's a definitely understood and understandable. Like it, it does take a lot to, to put those to put those bars together and to, to, you know, talk about something and to make sense. And people think it's so easy. People think just rapping is so I can do it. Like, you know, that's why we have all this bullshit out here, you know, at at, at the moment. Um, You've described yourself as a crafty little producer. Tell me about, you know, your connection to one of the most influential era defining hip hop collectives in history, digging in the greats. Yeah, you know, I got the DITC joint right there. Um, so, uh, man, I was lucky to meet AG back in the day, like around the time, right when I started making beats, like I said, when I was in my mid twenties and shit like that, um, my, my man, Big Wiz had thrown a showbiz and AG show here back in the day and Party Artie was there and shit like that. And so my man had a connection to him and he was like, yo, will you come to the airport and pick him up in the car with me? So I I went, I was like, yeah, show this. Cause, and he's like, we'll play your beats in the car. Maybe he'll like your beats and maybe he'll rap on your shit once you, we, you know, and that was like a real good look. So right when we got to the airport, I snatched AG's bags. He didn't really want me to snatch his bags. And, and I and I and I told him to get in the front seat. And he he thought he said, I'm not bougie and shit, but I grabbed his bags anyway. And I hopped in the bag and he was kind of tight about that. And he was like, rap for me right now. And I spit a I spit a cold ass verse for him, and we became friends right there. And uh, he took a liking to me a lot. And then he moved back up here to do an album with me. I just made I just started making beats. I, actually, at the time, like I had this old ass computer, and as soon as he uh, moved back up here to do start the album with me, it crashed, and we lost all the beats. And then so he was like, I was about to damn near cry because I was so hurt, but I wasn't gonna cry in front of him and shit. I wasn't gonna cry, but shit, motherfucking. He was like. Well, you made the beats. Let's just make some more and shit. So, um, but I made an album for AG, and which in the album a few times he says I'm digging, I'm in the crew, and uh, so he put me down. And also, he they were trying to start a digging in the crate crew record company back in the day. Um, I mean, like bring it back with Universal Records, and they sent a dude up here to sign me to it and shit like that, which was dope. And but I, I think if the deal fell through with Universal, but everybody in digging in the crates crew got an artist to pick for that label, and I was AG's choice uh, before wow. a girl called. I think AG's got girl code now. That's his artist. Those two chicks that are really dope from the Bronx, oh, yeah. or from Brooklyn. But um, yeah. And now, so he's their manager and shit. But I think, oh, like eight years ago, he was trying to do some flash shit like that with me and, and dig it in the crates crew. And I appreciate that. Word up, man. You, you but, just, but also, and that's just the music side. But while AG was up here, he taught me like the most about life and being a man and being a good friend and about women and shit. AG like because I didn't have a dad like I said so I think AG taught me a lot of fathership stuff when I was young which I really appreciate. That's amazing, man. I, I I haven't heard you talk about that, and you know that that's some of those things that that we need, some of those intangibles that we need from from these people who like we revere in a way. You yeah. know, we like you know we appreciate what they've done for us, and you know, and we've given our fandom to or whatnot. Like that's that's dope. The, that's yeah. really to speak about. Um, yeah. but congratulations, man. You know, that's not something that many can say they are a part of. 
And yeah, for sure. And I just talked to AG like two days ago. He said he's coming back up to Minneapolis to work, and we're going to try to work on another album. So that's pretty cool. Shout out to AG, my brother. Shout out to yeah, shout out to yeah, AG. Yeah. And, um, shout out to moms for, for getting you, uh, you know, to a place to where you can flourish creatively and do the things that you are doing. Um, yes. Shout out to everybody who you've shouted out so far. Um, yeah. I want to give you the same question about a guy who I really could not rationally explain who is not in my top five large amount how did that how did that come yeah. about how's your relationship for him the boy with a billion bars all right so um man shit. so he was like one of my favorite rappers uh when i was younger because i grew up on the locks super hard you know what i'm saying i'm also a mixtape kid um every time i went to new york with my uncles and shit like that i would come back home with a stack full of k slay tapes and everything like that so um and i didn't really necessarily like jay hood that much pal and then like once large amount came into d black around that time i was a big okay. fan of his <laughs> or whatever you know but um so uh man i so i loved i love large amounts raps you know what i'm saying he was one of my favorite rappers around that time when i first started making beats and then so he was one of the first big rappers to me was a big rapper that I wanted to get on on a beat of mine. So it took I found a sample, one of the samples said large amount in the sample and I sent it to him and he uh rapped on it. And that was the first like big look that I got from out of town. And he was also one of my favorite rappers. So I was like, damn, this is some magical shit. I can try I can make something happen. And we always stayed in contact after that. Like not only did he rap on one beat at that time, he rapped on like two or three. And um, but that one that I sent with his name in it is what got him. And um we became friends just through the internet. You know what I'm saying, but it was because he was one of my favorite rappers in the world. His, his raps about his raps about like hustling and friendship and um, struggling and coming up being a fly being a fly young rap kid is like that should really really connect with me hard. Uh, uh, and the way he does it, I'm just like again, I can't rationally explain why he's not in my top five. Definitely one of my favorite rappers for as long as I've known mm -hmm. about him. Um, yeah. I was recently able to speak with him or, you know, for an interview. And I'm going to ask you the same thing that I asked him. Why wasn't he on Remember, They Gonna Remember the Titans? Uh, he was on my last album and um, I just didn't want to necessarily. We just did so much work together. So I was giving it a break on this one or something. Same I thing. Guess. Cause I, I got I got because I got a couple unreleased joints with them like the honorable album that we just did is a little shorter than it was supposed to be. Like we got a whole another half an album. So um, I don't know. I just kind of kept it Minneapolis on this one. I usually have a couple features from out of town on it with some homies from out of town, but I just let him live on this one. But um, my last album, Hidden Corner Star, he, he's got one of my favorite joints called Fallwell Park with me. Um, Y'all are like a kind of, of a dynamic duo with the chemistry and same thing with you and, a with you and AG. Like your yeah. his, his pedigree. Thank you again. I was amazed to hear that you and Large had only spent time in the same studio, you know, for that project. Um, talk to me about the the innate connection between a, a true producer and a true MC that you know could possibly produce the years of magic that y'all have created without even being in the same space. Right. So yeah, he's come up here twice. I, I was supposed to go to many I was supposed to go to New York and see him, but I was late on it or something. So he spun up here. He spun up here once and then he came back for my birthday in the same year. But um shit. So it's like I said, I was such a big fan of his music coming up as a child, kind of or a younger dude that uh man, I was just so happy to have him on my beats. And I, I also, like I said, it's the sampling thing a lot. Um right at this time, over over the last ten years is when hip hop is like real good lyricists sometimes they don't know if they should start rhyming on as they should none of us know like start rhyming over trap joints trying to switch the sound up or whatever and um but it, deep down in my soul is like i'm, I'm in ditc i just want to catch the rap over sample beats like crucial ass sample joints so I, I was like if i can just get large amount as many sample beats as i can it's going to be a good look you know what i'm saying and um so i i, I make i make every beat that i'm making kind of like at the end of the day, I can rap on it the best. I, I, feel, I feel like the large amount is a better rapper than me a little, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I make the beats that like only, I make I make them in the ill way, the ill special magic tricks. And uh, I just, any beat that I send him, he, he'll, he would sound good on. So I just, you know what I'm saying? And 
sometimes he'll be like, Mike, I got 50 beats from, from three years ago. Let me go through those. And I'm trying to send him new ones. But so there's just a shit ton of, uh, of space there and i'm glad that he he accepted me and took me in instead of other other people who had a bigger name or something like that because i was able we were able to do so much work without any like bullshit involved just love word up straight up and down and uh again much appreciated um these are those kind of combos that we need you know these yeah are those kind of and Need. And then I must, I must, I must comment on his character. Once he came up here, he's just one of the coolest dudes I ever met in, in my life. Too, just like funny. He reminds me of me in a lot of ways. He's like only a year or two older than me, so we're about the same age and shit. But I'm a little younger, so he's kind of like big bro, and he's hilarious, and he's my guy, and uh, he's a gentleman and just a smooth ass motherfucker. And I really appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. That's that's what's up. Again, that that's what we love about that. Those that's. Those are those intangibles that we love about these people who, you know, we, we like it. Exactly. Appreciate Straight it. up, because he wanted to come and kick it. And uh, so I was like, first thing, I was like, shit, he better be cool as he sounds like in the songs. And as we on the phone and shit, I was just hoping that he was going to be, wasn't going to be any kind of weird way. And he just wasn't. He's a real cool dude. Straight up. Word up and down. Um, if you could, if you could compare yourself, and this is a it might be a really weird question. I hope it's not. But if you could compare yourself to any producer MC, who would it be? Um, that's a good question. Um, as a producer MC, like the same. If I could, yeah, like you know, as a, as an MC producer, producer MC, one who does both. I don't know, probably like an alchemist type shit or something. But I can yeah. rap. Little, I rap better than alchemist a little though. But okay. he makes better beats than me, so it evens out. So alchemist is a whack rhymer, but a better be. No, I don't think that. I, I really love. I, I really love his raps. But I, I've heard. Of, I've heard people say they might not per se. But I, I think he's a dope rapper though. Well, you kind of get that with uh, damn near every rapper producer. Which one you know do they exactly. say exactly? You know, yeah. I like Jay Dilla's. Rap. I like Jay Dilla's raps a lot. Rest in peace. He, he was a cold. He was a cold ass rapper when he rapped. Um, I like when I like when Mad Love himself. My my gold MC called him the best producer on the mic. Um, did in their tribute, you know, can't stop this from. I think might have been phrenology. I, I'm really a black thought man. Um, yeah, no, for sure, he's a man. I would compare you if I could, Mister Martyr, Your Excellency. To Madlib, yeah, to, that's dope. I, yes, to I love, love Madlib. I mean, if you don't, you just probably have never heard him or don't know about him. Um, yeah. That guy, um, and and while you know, I, I give the same criticism to him. You know, definitely not the best producer on the mic. Um, you know, definitely not the best MC. He he, he got kind of styles, though. He got Quasimodo and shit. Like Quaz will rip it. I ain't, I ain't gonna front. Yeah, you know. shout out to Laura Quaz. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I would, I would, I would compare you to him. Basically, off the strength of like your your like irreverence for what you're actually going to to sample, and like the way you're going to speak. Even even y'all, even your rap voice is kind of kind of or similar yeah. a bit. Uh, um, that's a good. That's a great compliment to me. I, yeah, man. I, 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 I yeah. I love Mad Love. Yeah, that's that dude. I got to meet him one time. I, I opened up before I met a show. Yeah. Where was that? Um, at Soundset, this like festival here that Rhyme Sayers throws and shit. He was like, he he watched us rap because he was he went on after us. So he was on the side. That was, so I, when I was rapping, I was kind of looking at him like shit. Get the rap in front of Mad Love is cool. Same thing, or um, yeah, feeling the same way. Switching gears a little bit, what would Mr. Mike the Martyr be doing if he wasn't making music? Oh, man, I'm not too sure. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I ask myself that all the time, and I don't really have an answer. I'm not sure. Mm. You know, when you don't have anything to do, you can do anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Facts. Honestly, yeah. So be happy. Uh, let's all be happy that you are doing music and doing the music that you are doing. Yeah. I'm a dude that likes to believe that he has his ear to the street. And I'm one of those rare birds who actively checks for dope shit, you know, and doesn't just eat what I'm fed by the outlet. Yeah. You know, I'm 
know everything. I would agree with you. You having me on here and, and you're, you're being fond of large amount the way you are uh, lets me know how much you love hip hop as well. But so I really, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate people like you. You're way ahead of the curve. I'll tell you that. I mean, but I'm really not, honestly. I mean, because this is my first, this is my, this is my first Zoom meeting I've ever had at all. I've never even talked to anyone on a Zoom meeting like this. So, you, you know, that that lets me know you're a cold motherfucker. Hey, man, you know, A likes, you know, takes one <laughs> yeah. of just the martyr. Um, For sure. But like, so with with that being said, you know, how 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 do you feel like that? You know, the bullshit is is front street and, and people like you in your life just go under the radar. Like age old question, of course. How, how do you feel about that? Right. I feel like I feel all kind of ways about it, I guess. Like it depends on what day of the week it is and, and what the what the new song on the radio is, I guess. But in a in a, my general way of it is like I feel good about the way the hip hop has opened up and uh and at the same way that it helped me through my life, it's maybe it's helping many other kids in a broader sense now and shit like that. And uh, it also might be hurting, I'm not sure, but um, it's still just like a free form of expression, which I love. And uh, I hate, I, I like to think of it as hip hop has mutated since the days of me being a child listening to it. And what I think about a child the same age listening to hip hop now, what they're getting, and it's not the same at all. It's a really, I was getting like a spoonful of medicine and now they're getting a spoonful of poison. So, yeah. you know, I think about that, you know what I'm saying? But hip hop also saved me and it made the, the kind of hip hop that I did. AG taught me a long time ago. He was telling me about these kids that he was managing and shit like that. And they were, they were mad at him about him not getting a, a, a meeting with Jay-Z because he t talks to Jay-Z sometimes and shit, but he said he never asked Jay-Z for shit. So he wasn't gonna, that wasn't the first thing on his list for these kids. And uh, he, and they were really mad at, one of the kids kind of dressed like Lil Wayne and shit. He was a Puerto Rican kid. And, and um, he was trying to tell them like, uh, they can have a career making hip hop, like in the, under, in the same way of digging in the craze, or but they're trying to make a microwavable single and, ha and have a meeting with Jay-Z. And he's like, the next after that that happens next month what, what are you going to do you know what i'm saying but if you create it from the foundation and do it the right way even if it's not you, you don't have all the fandom and shit in the world but you can pay your bills you'll be well respected you can travel off of doing hip-hop the right way so um that's what i think about it and i i, I appreciate carrying the tradition of hip-hop the right way with samples and and uh like game in there punchlines and metaphors and telling the story from around my neighborhood and shit. So there's yeah. there's still a there's still a lot of magic in that shit, which is like Kendrick Lamar telling the story about where he's from and shit. So there's still a lot of magic in hip hop. It, it's a shame to see sometimes what's going on, but at the same time, uh what what are we gonna do, you know? But what are we gonna do? We're gonna do, <laughs> what, we're gonna do what you're doing, Mr. Martin. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna do what's up with what we're doing, and 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 we're gonna keep doing it too. We're not we're not gonna falter. We're not gonna we're not gonna stagnate. No. We're gonna sit in the way. We're gonna keep pushing and, not, and pushing pushing the dope shit too. And I'm and just I'm not hating on no young kids either. I like what they're doing, and hopefully they get inspired off of the shit that came before them the right way, like we did, like we all did. Straight up and down. Um, and and again, just um, hats off. And three cheers and, and flowers to you for being so dope and being one of those people that I put in that category and, you know, being true to the essence of this thing of ours, dude. Yeah, Straight definitely. Up. That's so very good. important. Yes, it's very important. And, and you're so prolific and, and just it feels like we're watching history being made. Straight up and down, yo. Can you 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 had that you you said a minute but a minute ago about your um your infamous shout out on on the Nardwar in, in interview? What's what's your connection? What's your connection to um to to Sophia and Lizzo? Uh, um, so they're two of my friends. Like we came up, we came up. They didn't really. It seemed like ah, uh, hold up. Yeah, now we're friend friends. Like we came up doing shows together when we it was just uh. We were just little kids. Nobody knew who we were and shit. So now, and I got to see Lizzo blow all the way up like that. And at the time, um, Sophia is Lizzo's DJ. 
and also like best friend and shit. And at the time she was my best friend and like uh, we were in a band and shit at that time. So I was just, I was expecting, um, I was expecting no to ask about the band. I wasn't even expecting really shit. I was having a bad day because my homie died. And so I was kind of like crying and shit. And I was like, man, shit, let me check out this um, Lizzo thing. And maybe he mentioned the band name. And then he said my name. Shit. And I was really, uh, really happy about that. And I'll shout out to Nardwire for show. And uh, I, I think it's maybe a credit to do to him being a radio guy and a record, a record guy and shit. And like checking on, checking on the work that's been put in. But um, me and, yeah, me and Lizzo and Sophia go back partying and doing shows way back in the day. Straight up and down. And, and I love rest. both of them a lot. Word up. And, and uh, I was trying to say rest in peace to, to your mans. Um, yeah. Rest in peace, my man, Evan. Rest in peace. You, you also, like Narwar, dabble in radio, too, out there in Minnesota. Who was yep. who you affiliated with? What was the deal? Yeah, I've had a radio show for the last two years um, called Lake Street Star Radio, Hidden Corner Star Radio, um, with me, my man, Sir, Mixie. Uh, I've had a lot of co-hosts. My man, Migs, got the joint. But it was the only local radio show here for the last two years that was just kind of focused on local shit. I, I did interviews with Slug and Bobby Raps and uh, a bunch of bunch of cool interviews. I interviewed all the local like OGs here that went back and did hip hop since 1979 in Minneapolis, like Smoke D, shout out to him. Um, so I was just trying to preserve the timeline of hip hop a little bit, have, having a local show on KRSM is a community thing. So I was just providing my um, providing my services to the community. I got my homegirl Mixie's doing it now. I'm taking a little break. But um, big shout out to Drea and BK1 for at KRSM. That's Brother Ali's DJ had something to do with help, helping found that radio station. Straight up and down. So I, 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 yep. I need to tune in because, you know, I'm already tuned in to everything that you have going on. So it's just a little bit more of that. You have one hell of a 20 money three, Mr. Martyr. And you started this year of our Lord out, out like a true champ running on all cylinders. <laughs> yeah. I spent them early. You're right. Um, what can the fans and, and really the culture at large expect coming up next from Mike Martin? I'm going to drop a couple videos for the Remember the Titans album. I'm about to put out a remix with my man Meta for the Eye Salt. So I'm going to uh, do a couple things focused around the album for the next couple months um, until I come up with the next decision on what I want to do. Really. Me and Elijah Mount got some more work to do this year and shit like that. I was about to... Um, go out to California for a while, so I'm not too sure exactly what I'm about to do right now, but. Have fun, when you going to California? Yeah. yeah, I'm about to drop some videos for um, Remember the Titans, though, for sure. What 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 records are you are you looking at shooting for? Um, Everybody likes the sad song, the Untitled one a lot, so um, I'm shooting one. With... Wait, 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 hold on, what am I missing? It's Untitled, the sad song. It's like, what the fuck you say? Today's price wasn't yesterday. The game changed. Okay, and I, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah. Everyone likes that song a lot, which is funny. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Um. And my my favorite joint is um Dead Homies. Straight, straight up and down. Um. At what what? You and you said there's another half of this, right? Is it going to be connected to They Gonna Remember the Titans, or is it going to be like a whole new project? Um, no, nah, that was for Large Amounts album. There's another half to Large Amounts album, Honorable. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got yeah. it. Yeah, I missed that. My bad. Um, no, it's all right. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Uh, I usually like K Slay said he's from Harlem, it's never one of nothing. So, I usually like to make part twos and shit to my projects, but I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave Remember the Titans where it's at. Hey, straight up and down, you know. I, I actually, um, voted on, um, Large had put up a, um, a, a poll one time, should he continue the Dharma series? And I voted no. After part three, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think you should do it. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. they, uh, move on to the next. Good good stuff, because whatever you're dropping is is received very well. And rest in peace to Case like once again, you know, he, we mm -hmm. keep mentioning him. He, he was a lightweight friend of the rap scene. That guy was just out of this world. Uh, dope as, 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 you know, in the same line of how you're, of how highly you're speaking of the larges and the AGs, K Slay was was right up there in, in that category. Um, tell the people, uh, thank you again, sir, Mr. Martyr. Facts. Tell the people where they can hear 
Or Drama King Case Slay, Street Sweepers. Right, absolutely. Um, t- tell the people where they can hear your music and just trying to break up. You prefer, which one, what platform you would prefer they listen to you on? Can you hear me? You, got you. Um, you can check me out. You can check me out on all on all platforms. Mike the Martyr, uh, Mike M A R T Y R, and um, I'm on Instagram too. All the shit like that. You know, that straight up and Mike down. Pop up in the city. You got a cat in there? Yeah, the cat's starting to mess with me. Yeah, I do got a cat. What's the cat's name, man? I don't know. I've got three cats in the house. I don't even know. I don't fuck with cats. <laughs> Don't fuck with the cats, but it's three of them in there. Okay, you know I fuck with the cats, but I got like mm-hmm. seven of them out there. They outside. I know. But yeah. um, yeah, I like right? cats a little bit, but not, I like not cats enough. a little bit. Not in my room though. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. again, Mr. Martyr, thank you. Is there anything else you want to say to your loyal, current, and and future fans? I really appreciate the interview, Frank. Much love. Um, now nah, just keep an eye out for everything coming out. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up. I, I sell beats and shit. If you want to, anyone wants some production or whatever I could do to help you with your career, shit like that, I'm here. You know, much love. Keep an eye out for all the shit. And man, we, we can't wait more for coming. Everything. Hey, exactly. We can't wait for everything that you got coming. And, and we definitely got the eye out. And we know we're going to hear it first because, you know, I, I am Frank Rod D right here on the rap scene. No, I'm joking. Mr. Mike DeMar, yeah. thank you very much once that's again. Love. We're going to say peace. Um, that's what we got. Yep. I'll highlight you later. Peace, homie.